Okay, today we're going to try to implement or solve an optimization problem. We'll do a hello world type of optimization, meaning a, a beginner uh, example. Um, and, and in this video, we're going to do it in Python. So the function that we're going to minimize is this one here on the right. Um, and don't get hung up on the fact that it's a really simple function. Just imagine that this could be a huge thing, hundreds or thousands of lines of code. Uh, it's a function and any function, right? Any objective is gonna look something like this, where X is gonna be a vector, a general vector. It could have many entries, in this case, just two design variables, but you could have dozens or hundreds of design variables. And you're gonna return a function, a scalar, your objective. Okay, and again, this could be a really long thing, but in this case, it's really simple. So let's just write that out here. I'm gonna just call this objective and I'm gonna return uh, one minus, and remember Python is zero base, so I've got to drop all the ind indices by one compared to what I've written here, plus a hundred times x1 minus x0 squared, and then that whole thing is squared. Okay, so there's my objective function. Let's just make sure it works. Let's, uh, let's call x3, uh, three, three, for example. And let's just call this, and I'm just going to print it out. I called it x0. Okay, so it's 3,604. Now, imagine that I didn't have an optimizer, and I had to do this manually. Now, of course, in two dimensions, this is pretty simple. We could plot this function, look at it, and kind of figure it out. But imagine I've got hundreds of variables, right? I, there's no way I could plot it or figure out where the minimum is. I just have to try things. You know, maybe I put a 2 here. Uh, we got a little better. Uh, let's try this. Okay. No. Uh, okay, so you can see this is going to be really difficult to figure out. Uh, you know what 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 I should put in here. Just sampling around. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, Okay, so you know you could manually try this, but of course this is optimization, so we're going to actually find the optimum. And the the um, function we're going to use is called minimize. It's available in SciPy. I'm going to assume that you've installed Python in SciPy. If not, uh, look for some online tutorials. I'll do that. I'm going to go to SciPy um, optimize. I guess is what it's called. Um, yeah, so if I just go to optimize, for example, has scalar, which is scalar optimization, which is boring. That's just 1D, that's not very helpful, but minimize, this is for one or more variables, as it says there, minimize a function of one or more variables. So great. Okay, so you can see that there are lots of optional arguments. We're not gonna talk about many of them today. We'll get to that over time. But what I need at a minimum is just a function to minimize and a starting point. Okay, so, uh, and, and we can see that x0, it says uh, it's initial guess. It's an array of size n, where n is the number of independent variables, or the number of design variables, in our case, 2. And uh, fun is just an objective, fu objective function to be minimized. It's of this form, it has x, and it could have arguments if we wanted to pass those on, but we don't have any extra arguments, so this is fine. So we've got everything we need. Um, so I'm just going to import that from scipy.optimize. I'm going to import minimize. Yeah. And I'm going to start at a different starting point here. And let's just minimize. Minimize that objective and I'll give it a starting point. Um, what is it going to return? Well, let's see. It says it returns res optimization result. And the result has x. It has a success flag. Um, if I click on it, uh, it actually has the function too. Uh, as an array. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to print some of these out. Let's print out x. Let's print out the function value. Let's print out whether we succeeded or not. Okay. Um, and let's just run this. And it's done. So ran. It said that my uh, let me just make this a little nicer here. 
like that so I can see what these are. These are the optimal values and the success is true. Okay, I guess Python put the space in automatically for me. So the solution was one, one uh, and the corresponding function value is essentially zero, right? Within my tolerance. Okay, so uh, if we go back and look at the function, we actually could have figured that out from inspection in this case. This quantity is squared, this quantity is squared, so it could never be negative. So the best we could do is zero, and that's gonna happen when x1 is one, so this term becomes zero. And if x1 is one, x2 is also one, then this term becomes zero. So indeed, we have found the correct solution. That's great. Uh, and let's look at this. So here's what this function looks like. Again, it's only two dimensions, so we can plot it, which is nice, but in general for things that we care about, you know, with five, 10, 20, 100 variables, you just can't visualize it. But this function, it's called the Rosenbrock function. It's used a lot for kind of getting started because it does have only two dimensions, so you can visualize it, but it's at least somewhat tricky because it has this sort of long, narrow valley. There's these very steep sides where the function increases. You could think of this big canyon coming into this valley and it's got this kind of banana shape that you gotta search across. Okay, so let's make this problem a little more interesting. Um, we're just gonna add a couple of constraints to the problem. These are ones I just made up. Okay, so uh, they're both inequality constraints. So let's uh, go back to the documentation and see what we need to do here. Um, let's go back to minimize. Okay, so I can see there's this thing called constraints. So let's go look at that. Constraints, uh, it says it wants a dictionary. And the algorithm we're gonna use, which is actually the default if you put in constraints is SLSQP. Um, let's see where it says that. Uh, I just saw this somewhere. So there's a place where you can choose method and there are a bunch of methods that are available. Uh, it says, if you don't give it one, it's gonna choose one of these. So for the unconstrained, it's gonna use this, which is the one we want. For constrained, it's gonna use this, which is what we want. And if we had sparsity, anyway, we'll talk about it later. So we're gonna use this. It's great. So for constraints, for those two, this is the one we're using. You have to give it a dictionary with this kind of information. So let, let's do that. Let's call uh, constraints. It's a dictionary and I need to give it a type. And it says type is a string. Uh, it's either equality or inequality. So I'm going to give uh, some inequality constraints here. Remember I had only inequality constraints here. So uh, if we had more, right, it says I can give it a list of dictionaries. So I'd have to give it a list of different constraints, but these ones here are all inequality. So I'm, I can group them together. And then I need to give it, uh, says fun. I got to give it the name of a function. I'm going to call my function con. I haven't defined it yet, but we'll just call it con for constraints. These other two are optional. Um, those we'll get into later, not today. So let's define some constraints. Um, I need to find this function con. Um, and let's see, it doesn't give me much other than to say here, uh, equality constraint means the constraint function result is to be zero, whereas inequality constraint means that it is to be non-negative. Or in other words, it's assuming that my constraints are written in the form that feasible would be a positive value. Okay, so it's supposed to be non-negative or positive. Greater than or equal to zero, in other words. Okay, so uh, let's go back and look at my constraints. I need to write these so that they're greater than or equal to zero. So I've got to move everything on the left-hand side to the right side. That's opposite our convention and many solvers, but that's the way that this one wants it. So it's gonna be one minus x1 squared minus x2 squared is greater than or equal to zero. So I've got two constraints. So I've got to return two values, an array of size two. With my objective, I just had one value. I returned one number. For my constraints, I'm gonna return two numbers. So I'm gonna return, I'm just gonna, we don't have to do this with NumPy, but so let's just do it this way, because this will be pretty typical. Okay, so I'm gonna define an array. Um, um, zeros, oops. And I'm gonna make my first one, sorry, this Python. First one is gonna be that first constraint, one minus, x1 squared minus x2 indexing squared. So again, what I did, I'm returning a quantity that I want to always be 
non-negative, or in other words, greater than or equal to zero. So I moved everything over. So this quantity should always be greater than or equal to zero if it's to be satisfied. And the second constraint, five minus x zero minus three times x one. Okay, and then I got to return that. So I returned my constraints. All right, so I think I've defined everything properly here. Oops, there's the wrong syntax for dictionary. I should have got a colon there. Good, so everything's good. Let's run it again. And uh, yeah, I gave me the same answer because I didn't actually pass in the constraints, right? Uh, that's an argument to the function, it takes function x zero. There's a keyword argument here, constraints equals. And by default, it's nothing. So I need to pass that in constraints equals these constraints. Okay, so now I ran it and I got a different answer and I'm just checking and yes, indeed, this is the correct solution. So that's good. Okay, so um, we've solved the problem. Uh, some other things that we'll probably use or you'll want to use at some point for sure, we will talk about later, adjusting tolerances, um, options. There's actually not that many options available here. Uh, to be frank, this is not the greatest optimizer. They're not very, they're not really very many good or really uh, good free optimizers. There's some good commercial ones um, because there's a freely available one. It's okay, it'll work well for many of the homework problems, but as you get into your project, if you find uh, that you need something better, come see me, I have a, a, a license to uh, SNOPT and we can get you set up with that. But um, we would like maybe a little more information. So if we go to options, um, different solvers have different options and you can look at them, but uh, display, we'd at least like to display a little bit more. So let's do that options equals, says it needs a, a dictionary and I can change the maximum number of iterations. That's something you'll probably have to play with at some point. But for now, I just want to change the display. I want to display uh, set to true to print, pr to print convergence message. So I'm just going to true. And the keyword was options, same one that I called it. So let's run that. And you can see it gave me a little more information, although not really a ton. It told me how many iterations it took, how many times the function was called. Uh, and how many grade evaluations. So uh, if you want more detail, uh, unfortunately you'll have to kind of manually do it, but at least we can get a little bit more information from the solver directly. Okay, so that wraps this up. Um, I would encourage you to try this on your own. Make sure you can do problems like this uh, and get them set up and, and, and solve it. All right, have a good day.